top voltage and uh, what you need to do you need to open your box and uh, on the box it's supposed to say the voltage on the Intel CPUs on the box the voltage is saying between minimum and maximum uh, to run at the uh, manufacturing speeds so just keep in mind that you take it as a max and going up if, if your motherboard not gonna say how much you need but I suggest you go with 1.5 volt as a default at any overclocking and then you can lower it down but at least it's going to give you a stable overclocks uh, a decent even stable overclock about like 600 megahertz or 400 megahertz at least all right uh, as again I'm doing this video tutorial for the uh, any socket 7075 chips so I'm not going to be so precise in here. All right, um, as you can see, North North Beach voltage setting is up just just a notch as well, and it's saved. So now we're going to start overclocking after we set our voltages. So what we need to do, we need to go to the CPU features, and we need to make sure that East function is disabled, and this is the mode that needs to be disabled then uh, limit CPU max value needs to be disabled C1E function needs to be disabled and C1E function it's a function to uh, something like cool and quiet in AMD technology so basically what it does it just lowering that multiplier or that uh, clock ratio on the CPU as you saw and putting from 9 to 6 to the lowest as possible so when it's lowering that multiplier uh, CPU switching the frequency of the CPU getting lower like you saw I just jumped from 3 gigahertz uh, I jumped to 2 gigahertz and uh, also if you don't know that 1 gigahertz is 1000 megahertz so I jumped from 3000 megahertz to 2000 megahertz and um, by switching the ratio clock multiplier but uh, what does this function C1E function does in the windows it's switching it like this like we just did in the bias whatever you're not using your CPU at the full or it's idling so it's just, it just doing that it's just switching to uh, save the energy and cool down your CPU because it's blowing the multiplier so it's lower frequency and the higher frequency generates more heat and plus it's lowering the voltage on that CPU that is required and the higher is voltage as again it's, it generates more heat as again so that's how Intel come out with this uh, function executable disable beat uh, it's good to keep it enabled uh, virtualization technology keep it enabled if you uh, would like but if you would like to have the best overclock as possible you can disable this and squeeze another 50 megahertz from your CPU what it does uh, virtualization technology is basically used with the virtual machines on the Microsoft and Sun and uh, Java and you know other operating systems uh, those little uh, software of the virtual machine that and, uh, allows you to run a uh, few operating systems at the same time and I'm a software developer and I'm using that from the Microsoft virtual machine and PC machine and uh, what it does it allows me to run Windows XP at the same time to run Windows 7 or Vista and test my software uh, without rebooting my computer so um, and switching it uh, with the keys between the operating system so it's a cool to keep this virtualization technology because if you're gonna use the multiple operating systems like I do in performance frequency unlimited keep it disabled it's designed for the extreme uh, CPUs uh, basically for the old extreme CPUs uh, socket uh, 7075 Pentium 4 but keep it disabled um, 
then uh, core multiprocessing enable um, we would like to keep it enabled because it tells us that it's going to use more than one core and on this CPU it's uh, dual core as a no core to dual so I need to keep it enabled so I'm going to use two cores uh, but if you willing to overclock so high uh, the CPU if you're going to disable one core it's it will generate less heat and the processor will overclock higher but as again it's not going to give you that much performance as two cores because two cores in my opinion going to give you a better performance anyways so I suggest you to keep it enabled and overclock with the two cores Callback boot fix uh, some motherboards not going to have it but basically just because this motherboard designed for the extreme overclocking uh, this thing has it because I can connect LN2 or dry ice to it and uh, overclock it so it's designed to run at minus 50 and lower so I'm gonna keep it disabled so I think I don't wanna play with this I'm, I'm not gonna go into minuses I'm in the air cooling alright uh, and water cooling you're not gonna go into minuses as well so just keep it like disabled if your motherboard has it but, but as again don't worry if your motherboard doesn't have some features I'm just let you know the main features and your motherboard gonna have the C1 C1 E function you need to disable it it's going to have E function you need to disable it it's probably gonna have the virtualization technology you need to disable it it's going to have the executable disable bit enable it I mean virtualization technology enable it uh, and it's probably gonna have the core multiprocessing for sure you need to keep it enable it all right but uh, on multi-core processing, if you're running P4, uh, it's not going to have it. So it's going to tell you the hyper threading, hyper threading, uh, hi hyper threading, and you need to enable it or disable it for a higher overclock. So um, okay, we done that. Then we're gonna put maximum uh, clock ratio it allows. And how to calculate it? You need to take your manufacturing CPU frequency and divide it by front side bus. You can get the multiplier or clock ratio. Also, how to find out what is your front side bus? You need to take your frequency, uh, external frequency, CPU frequency speed, divided by the multiplier. You're gonna get the clock, CPU clock front side bus. So how are we getting uh, external frequency on the CPU? External frequency on the CPU getting by the front side bus times the multipliers or times by the clock ratio. That's how we get the speed of our processors per core or per, per processor. So um, to overclock you need to overclock your front side bus. And, uh, on the socket 7075. Before it was overclocking by the multipliers but then they lower the multipliers to the maximum and lowest doesn't allow you to get over your uh, maximum multiplier doesn't allow you to set 10 if it's 9 the max. So um, only the extreme processors will let you do that but they're so expensive. So um, 333 megahertz it's my stock on the front side bus times 9 it's going to give me 3000 megahertz which is 3 gigahertz per core well what I'm going to do here I'm going to set it uh, whatever your CPU is lower than uh, 3 gigahertz that's how you're going to start overclocking you're going to go 2.8 if it's lower than 2.8 you're gonna go 3 gigahertz 3.2 3.4 3.6 3.8 4 and most of them they're gonna max out at socket 7075 at 4 gigahertz if you like enough you can squeeze 4.2 on the air cooling or, or water cooling, cooling in the home environment so um, without the minus temperature on the CPU 